street. They were clearing out the empty lot and making it neat. I said, man, is this cool? What you trying to do? They said, making a garden for me and for you. They said, hey, man, join us. Come on, let's go. Together we can make a pretty garden grow. I'll dig a hole and I'll plant a seed. And we can add the water that'll grow when things need. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation working together. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation working together. Now we friends were on the corner hanging out. I said, hey, you can hang around these garbage cans some other day. They said, man, is this cool? What you trying to do? I said, make a street garden for me and for you. I said, hey, cats, join us. Come on, let's go. We'll all cooperate and make a garden grow. You dig a hole and I'll plant a seed. And we will add the water that all grow and things need. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation working together. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation working together. Now we watch our garden grow and we come back every day. And the people in our neighborhood come round and say, Hey man, this is cool. Tell us what we can do. To keep this pretty garden you for me and for you. We all say, hey, join us, come on, dig the scene. We'll all cooperate and keep our garden green. You trim the leaves, and you put the weeds. And I will add the water that I'll grow when things need. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation, working together. Good evening and welcome to Cooperative Vermont. I'm Matthew Kropp. And I'm Eric Davis. And we're coming to you live from VCAM Studios this Sunday, March 24th, 2013. And we're going to be covering a pretty wide range of uh, issues this evening. Um, uh, to start with, uh, we'll be doing a little bit of a news roundup and then talking about um, the, the progress on the Burlington Telecom Co-op, um, this upcoming new economy conference, and finally Eric's experience at the uh, Credit Union National Association's uh, big governmental affairs conference. Um, so shall we dig into the news? Yes, yes. Let's let's uh, let, let's do it. Um, some exciting news um, with Granite City Grocery. Um, they have now 500 um, member pledges, and they're less. They're 100 away, about 100 away from the goal. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also some really exciting stuff going on where it looks like they're exploring kind of what space they eventually want to have. Um, yeah, no, there's. Um, I think they've got a whole committee looking around. They were originally um, sort of when the project started. There's this kind of new city place development um, that they were initially imagining that it would be in, but they're kind of keeping their options open just because of parking and other issues. But really, sort of from from what I've been hearing, the key is they want to have something that's walkable from down like a downtown grocery store, and so kind of figuring figuring that out in Barry is will be um, you know obviously kind of a big process, but. Yeah, that for especially like given that Barry has a large low income community that relies on the bus, like having something that would be walkable would be pretty huge for the city. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's it's really it's really exciting to see that that project really coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's you know the the five hundred is pretty huge, and it's also been interesting too to see kind of like the two big kind of co op startup projects in Vermont right now. And, I mean, there's some some others that are kind of in various stages of development, obviously, but I would say are. Um, Granite City Grocery and um, and the Burlington Telecom uh, Co-op project, and actually uh, I know Alan Matson, who's one of the key key people on the VT project, and uh, Emily Sanders Kaminsky, who's one of the core organizers for Granite City Grocery. I know we're uh, we're chatting recently, kind of uh, mm -hmm. to to compare notes about about the startup process for the two different uh, projects. So it's it's very uh, it's cool to see that kind of collaboration amongst different people and startup uh, startup. Pro projects going on. Right, right. Like that collaboration amongst cooperatives, the mm -hmm. cooperative spirit. Yeah, so it'll be, you know, they're, they're down to the final stretch, so if anyone out there has friends in the Barrie area, um, once they hit 600, I think the plan is to call in the 
call in the pledges, elect a board of directors, incorporate the co-op, and really get moving towards actually sort of having a having the proper store in Barry. So, congratulations to them. And uh, also just heard um, uh, if you want to kind of learn more and, and uh, meet Emily Kaminsky, I actually just got confirmation today that she will be one of the uh, one of the speakers at the upcoming. Um, uh, new economy summit in our cooperative track. So uh, awesome. we'll be talking more about that later in the show. But it's exciting to kind of have her, to have her, you know, on board to kind of speak about that experience because it's definitely one of the huge success stories in the recent uh, right. Vermont co-op movement. Um, so yeah, the uh, another another piece of news though that's kind of been interesting to watch has been uh, the energy co-op of Vermont. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they've been really sort of they have this co-op solar program and uh, they seem to be really kind of doing a lot of outreach to try to get the word out about that. Yeah, they're and they're doing uh, <clears throat> another information session for for folks that are interested in in uh, learning about co-op solar and how to how to do it and um, how to fund it as well. Um, there will be an informational meeting this Tuesday evening um, at the Charlotte um, at the Charlotte Community Library from 6 to 7. So um, that, that, that should be a really exciting and an informative event. Um, and I think VSECU is working with them mm -hmm. on yeah, getting this, people financing. So. Yeah, this whole co-op solar project is another great kind of like, you know, co-ops cooperating uh, sort of phenomenon in that you know, it's like you can co the energy co-op kind of will help with the setup of the solar of the solar hot water system, and then um, you know even for a lot of people it would be beneficial. To the energy savings over the long run are beneficial, but you know if you don't have the the cash up front, then the VSECU can step in with a loan to kind of help cover the cost of the solar the solar installation. So it's kind of a good a good interesting kind of you know different co-ops coming in and together sort of meeting this this energy need. Right. Um, so there's also sort of on the, on the horizon, this is kind of an interesting thing, um, is this petition about uh, the National Credit Union Administration. Mm -hmm. um, sort of the, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of what, what, this, what this thing is that's been floating around? And this isn't just Vermont. This is kind of a national thing. Right. Um, yeah, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Chip Filson who um, has been involved with the NCUA for... for um, for many years, and um, <clears throat> he started a petition at uh, WhiteHouse.gov to encourage um, the administration to um, appoint uh, regulators that um, knew the cooperative principles, that had, had a strong sort of uh, appreciation for the cooperative principles. So it's, a, it's an interesting sort of grassroots um, uh, strategy to uh, Ensure that cooperative identity is sort of represented in the regulators. Yeah, now it's one of those things where when I first saw it come out, I, I was a little bit skeptical just because it, you know, it was seemed a little self, kind of like a self-serving thing where it's like Chip Filson being like, "Hey, I know the cooperative principles. You should appoint me." Mm -hmm. um, but I dug in, and I um, actually there's a book that came out recently that's um, one of the first kind of credit union movement history books um, to have come out in quite a while. It's like 1970 2010. So I actually. Went back to that, looked through, found, sort of read a little bit about what he was up to in the early 80s when he, when he was involved in uh, the NCUA as kind of one of the assistants for someone else who, had, uh, who was the head of it at the time. And after reading that, I was sort of like, okay, yeah, this sounds good. And I think this is one of those really interesting um, opportunities in that, you know, again, the, the power of cooperatives really rests in the fact that they have the broad base of, of owner, member owners, and particularly the credit unions. There's like 100 million credit union members. And so if that base can be mobilized, um, then we can really, then in support of their cooperatives, that's, that's a pretty substantial sort of power block. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, and so that sort of having a mobilized membership, I think, can change the relationship between the institutions and the, the regulators. Mm -hmm. And like we saw that in like a small scale with the, with the BSCCU's um, kind of name fight with the Vermont regulator, where right. you know, it wasn't just you know, lawyers showing up to the hearings, but you know, a, few, a few folks showed up with video cameras and kind of put a little bit of pressure on. Uh, and I think that, that pressure really, I think, nudged it toward the settlement that was more favorable um, to the credit union. And actually, I just saw 
an advertisement on a bus the other day for the VSECU that was <laughs> very clearly saying, you know, redefining banking on it, which yep. is what the, the regulator is trying to stop them from saying. Right. So the idea that, that, you know, people sort of getting involved, the members getting involved, uh, can really sort of shape the sort of the regulatory challenges that credit unions face is an important one. And that, that's, you know, the, um, the, the power of, of that, that membership block. I think that's something that uh, the folks in CUNA are also, also considering. And, you know, we'll chat about that a little bit um, when, we, when we get to the Governmental Affairs Conference. Yeah, so, the, um, so one thing that I think is a really sort of uh, interesting possibility is that the, um, you know, right now it's, I think it has only like five to 6,000 signatures on it. Right. Um, so definitely if you're out there watching, uh, sign up for the, uh, sign up for, sign up on, add your name to the, to the pile to, um, to, to sort of push that forward. But I think it's the sort of thing where, as um, as time goes on, we're going to have a, uh, you know, it, it's sort of a measure of the kind of level of kind of activist involvement. And this is one of those things where really, like other co-ops, can intervene on behalf of their fellow co-ops, their fellow uh, credit unions, by um, by sort of asking their members to to sort of support the cooperative principles in the regulation of our banking co-ops. Mm -hmm. And if we have more favorable regulators. Perhaps credit unions could even start becoming a source of capital to help fund the rest of the cooperative movement. And I th you know, I think that just the sort of centering on the cooperative principles, I think that opens up um, the possibilities for more collaboration because um, you know there's this common bond of of principles um, that are shared by you know all cooperatives. So just ha you know having that at the core uh, of NCUA, I think, sort of expands the possibilities for, for cross-sector collaboration. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, any other uh, any other news before we jump into the uh, the Burlington Telecom co-op discussion? Well, we are um, in the you know credit union annual meeting season. So, um, New England Federal Credit Union. Um, their annual meeting is coming up this Tuesday, so if you're a member, uh, just a heads up that that's, that's going to be on Wednesday, March 27th at 5.30 p.m. in the Williston headquarters. And I, and I know people out there who are, um, who, you know, you might be like, oh, one more meeting to go to, but the, these meetings are both important and interesting, and uh, yeah, I think at this one there's actually kind of like an educational, little educational component. Yeah, there's a, there's a financial advisor that's going to be speaking on the U.S. economy and glo the global economy, so... So yeah, it's, I mean, it's you know one of those things where you can get together and you know meet the people who are um, responsible for making sure that your life savings are uh, being kept safe and uh, cared for, and uh, also a chance to sort of meet your fellow members and kind of get a sense of you know of your your power as a member owner. So you know definitely, if you are a member of a New England Federal Credit Union, consider consider going to that and. Uh, you know, all, some other, other, and if you're a member of Vermont Federal as well, um, that's coming up. So I think the 29th of March is the last day to RSVP for the um, for the free dinner. So free dinner always good. Um, and then uh, the the Vermont Federal meeting itself is on April 11th, 11th. at yes. the Sheraton, I believe. Yes, in that's South correct. Burlington. So Vermont Federal for Credit Union members, uh, you know, get your uh, get your RSVPs in, and hopefully we'll I'll see you uh, see you for some dinner. So I think that I think that sort of wraps up wraps up our co-op news. For cool. So yeah, let's dig in a little bit to the the latest on the Burlington Telecom Co-op project. Uh, for those at home who are watching who haven't been following this, uh, the uh, basically the there's been a, an ongoing campaign to organize a cooperative to offer an alternative buyer to the city of Burlington uh, for Burlington Telecom, our municipal co-op, um, and. Uh, right now, it's still sort of the, the exact contours of the final sort of settlement between the city of Burlington and city capital um, aren't aren't clear yet. And so, the you know whether the success or failure of of this project is very much going to be you know that's going to be a big factor of exactly what that settlement looks like. Sure. Um, but there's definitely been a lot of sort of positive movement uh, on the on the co-op front. Um, you know, there's been a number of meetings and. Um, there's actually there's a really important meeting I believe it was last week, um, in which the 
um, you know, probably there are about 20, 25 core people who have been putting a lot of work into this got, thing got together and um, sort of divided up some responsibilities. And one of the big things is, you know, the, the goal is to have the co-op legally incorporated so that when the settlement is announced, um, folks, the, the organization is kind of ready to go uh, and, and call in the rest of its capital and then sort of step up into the city and say, we are a potential bidder. Um, so the, I, I actually am one of the volunteers on the, the bylaws committee, and there's a draft, a set of draft bylaws that are on the, um, that are on the, the, the website, Keep BT Local. If you just go to keepbtlocal.com, you can, you can uh, find that. Um, it's a Google Doc. Um, it's open to comment from the public, so you can leave comments on any section. Uh, the, the, the bylaws themselves, the, the draft ones, are heavily based on the, the city market bylaws as sort of the, as just kind of the, for, the template. But there's, a number of, um, there's a number of sort of different things that people have suggested. So actually tomorrow um, is going to be sort of the, the, sub, the subcommittee meeting where everyone, we're going to look at all the comments that people have left um, and then sort of bring our, and then kind of have a discussion and come up with a final Draft that, that will then be presented to the uh, to the to the meeting, and the so the meeting of the membership is going to be coming up on April sixth. Um, it'll be eleven a.m. at Champlain Elementary School. Uh, the idea is it, we won't be calling in the whole two hundred fifty dollars pledges, but anyone who wants to participate and have a vote um, for the sort of initial board of directors will pay in at least ten dollars, um, so that there's. And that, that money will go towards um, the kind of legal costs of actually incorporating the organization. Um, and then there will also be a chance to go over the, 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 fi the sort of draft, final draft of the bylaws, propose any amendments, uh, and then the group can actually vote on those amendments and then vote on, on adopting those bylaws as a whole. And then kind of we'll move forward from there. It's, it's a really exciting project um, given how much... How, how much we depend on sort of access to internet these days and how much that contributes to the local economy. Um, it's a project that I haven't been as in, intensely in, involved in as, as you have, but I found, that, um, I found that meeting very interesting last week. Um, so there's, um, there was a lot of discussion um, on how to incorporate member input into the into the bylaw pro bylaws process, and um, I think the way that they've opened up the bylaws for comment and that they're out there so people can read them, um, I think it provides a lot of opportunity for 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 people to uh, sort of take ownership of, of the process, mm -hmm. and, and um, which you know, the, I think the more people feel like they're owners, the uh, the you know, the more strongly they're going to be bound to you know the or or you know supporting the work of the organization. So that was it was really interesting to see that discussion happening. Absolutely. And one one other thing that I think is is very interesting about this, and you know, anytime you've got a startup, it's a chance to sort of try new things mm -hmm. and really be on the cutting edge. And sort of that like any startup has that advantage, but I think this has another kind of really interesting advantage in that it's a telecom co-op. And so the kind of, you know, if it's an internet-based, like the whole point of it is to provide access to the internet, you know, to, to people. That's its reason for being. Right. And so there's a chance to do a lot of really innovative kind of online democracy stuff. So that, you know, whereas in some other co-ops where you have like a more, more of a variety of, of technological skill levels, um, you know, actually sort of saying, okay, like we can do voting online. We can, you know, have all these ways of empowering people through... Through their their through online participation, mm -hmm. and one interesting uh, idea that's kind of come up in some of these discussions is um, is thinking about you know kind of one of the core principles of cooperatives is member education, and actually having um, you know part of the the program of the of the co-op to have like um, member kind of almost like peer computer literacy mentorship, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. where it's like sort of like just like someone who does member work at City Market. Um, bagging groceries or helping out in the admin office, uh, you could almost have member work as like okay, like if someone joins and wants to learn to use a computer and wants to learn to use the internet, but you know doesn't have those skills right now. Having the co-op be, be a way through which you know members can volunteer to sort of help each other. 
really kind of bringing that human element into it. So it's not simply another Comcast that happens to have a little bit of a different ownership structure, but it's actually doing like real outreach into the community of its members and right. you know meeting those needs and building those skills and like honoring that educational piece of the cooperative mm -hmm. mission. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like and there's lots of different ideas floating around, and if anyone out there who's watching has has any ideas that they would like to see, like you know the idea of maybe the um, the the co-op kind of sponsoring a hacker space, um, which would you know is essentially for those who aren't aware of the model is kind of like a um, open like membership based workshop where you have certain tools that maybe one person wouldn't want to own, but you know you'd like to have access to occasionally, so everyone can kind of join that. And you know it's this sort of thing where we're starting it up, so so who knows where it could where it could take us, but right. there's a lot of potential there. It seems like you know different cooperative structures have different um, ways in which um, members can can sort of interact with the organization and the the telecom um, model. Um, there's there's a lot of points for that to happen and a lot of a variety of ways in which that can happen. So. Um, that's really exciting in terms of being able to build, you know, community, not mm -hmm. not just you know an economic, um, it, not just meeting an economic need, but you know, meeting a social and community need as well. Right, kind of an all, an all of the above type thing. Right, and it's you know so again, you know, if you'd like to get involved uh, or haven't pledged yet but would like to, uh, keepbtlocal.org um, is the website to go to, um, and again the the meeting. The initial meeting, if you're interested in kind of touching base with the community, just even checking it out, you don't have to necessarily join. It's a public meeting. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go and ask some questions and just sort of see see what the deal is, um, again, it's April 6th at 11 a.m. at Champlain Elementary School. So um, so definitely consider, consider going if you can. And the business purpose of that meeting is it was primarily to sort of officially approve those bylaws? Mm -hmm. to, to sort of adopt the bylaws and... Um, you know, and or like if there's, you know, you look go online, you look at the bylaws. There's something you really feel strongly that should be changed. Then you can come and actually propose. Like if you've joined and paid in your ten dollars, you can propose an amendment, which will be debated, and people can sort of and the the, the group there will kind of decide, you know, whether to accept it or mm -hmm. what to do. But you know, it's kind of a chance to sort of figure out, okay, what are what are the those basic ground rules that we can have so that we have a le kind of legal status so that it's much easier to move forward on um, on stepping up and saying you you know to the city of Burlington you shouldn't sell Burlington Telecom to Comcast slash Verizon now that they're merging um, hmm. uh, you shouldn't sell it to Fairpoint or any of these other big kind of corporate uh, buyers you know we should keep local control and the best way to do that is through a democratic co-op you know owned by the people who use the service mm -hmm. yeah I agree um, and there's you know there's also lots of avenues to, to help out um, so if it's a if it's a project that, that you're also passionate about, um, check check out the website. There's all sorts of ways in which um, you can get involved and, and, and do outreach and, and sort of help build that uh, uh, cooperative structure. Cool. So uh, hope to see you on uh, on April sixth. But um, so I think next week, the next thing we've got on the agenda for the show tonight um, is the uh, upcoming uh, new economy conference. Yeah. Um, so this is big for Cooperative Vermont. Let's mm -hmm, just put that mm -hmm. out there right now. Yeah, this is really interesting. This is a project that um, we've been working on um, with a bunch of other community organizations and, and groups. And uh, a lot of folks have sort of been helping make this a reality. But um, it's now, now that, you know, we've been working behind the scenes on this for a while. And now it's actually starting to, uh, so you know, some of these events are coming up and, Actually, going to be coming into fruition pretty pretty soon here, um, and you know, Cooperative Vermont is is hosting the 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 state of Vermont's cooperative economy uh, panel to sort of uh, kick off our you know our track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the uh, so like the the basic overarching theme is like ownership in the new economy. Right. And so, uh, you know, so basically, there's the student divestment movement. Uh, UVM is going to be having a track on that. There's going to be a uh, sort of a, a track based around the theme of like financing the new economy. So looking at various like alternative finance mechanisms. And then there's us who's do, who are doing the cooperative the cooperative track. 
Um, and so this, this forum is going to be April 7, 17th at uh, 6.30 p.m. in uh, Memorial Lounge in uh, Waterman at UVM. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting evening. I'm, like, I'm very excited for it because you know, right now, like, if you look at the structure of the cooperative movement in Vermont, uh, you, know, you have a lot of individual co-ops. And then a few of the co-op sectors have, you know, sector-wide organizations. So the credit unions right. have the Association of Vermont Credit Unions. Mm -hmm. The food co-ops are tend to be part of the neighboring food co-op association. Um, and you have the Vermont Employee Ownership Center, which doesn't represent employee-owned co-ops, but is kind of has kind of the, some expertise and supports a lot of them, and is in turn supported by a lot of them. Right. Um, but you know, at the same time, like there isn't, there really isn't a space right now for all of these different kinds of co-ops to come together and kind of develop this holistic sense of, okay, what does the co-op economy look like? Mm -hmm. And so basically what we've done is we've sent out invitations to people who seem to kind of have a pretty good sense of each of their sectors. Um, and we've gotten a pretty positive response. So for instance, um, so we've got five people lined up, um, including uh, Joe Bergeron, who's the head of the Association of Vermont Credit Unions. Uh, speaking about credit unions, um, Roger Albee, who's um, the former Secretary of Agriculture for Vermont, um, who is who has written a really interesting piece on kind of the history of agricultural co-ops. Uh, so speaking about kind of producer co-ops, um, Molly O'Brien, who's the uh, the chair of, the chair of the board at uh, City Market, will be talking about food co-ops in Vermont. Um, Avram Pat, who has been on this program before, will be um, talking about energy co-ops. And then Don Jameson of the Vermont Employee Ownership Center will be talking about worker co-ops. Mm -hmm. So essentially we'll have you know, these five pe people from these kind of different major sectors of co -op, the cooperative economy in Vermont, each kind of giving a five, probably five to ten minute presentation on their particular sector. And then, kind of, then we'll kind of open it up for discussion and questions from the audience. And hopefully kind of it will be something where each sector can learn from the other and also sort of people who aren't super familiar with, with exactly what the co-op economy looks like can kind of, or have questions about particular pieces can kind of get their questions answered there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting event. Really exciting panel. Yeah. And so, so that will be, um, again, uh, April 17th, 6.30 p.m. in uh, the Memorial Lounge in the Waterman Building at UVM. So for anyone who's interested in uh, coming out for that. And um, you know, maybe we should talk about the structure of the, of the conference um, in terms of you know, each sort of organization has a, or each track has a kickoff event. Um, and it'll, it'll be starting April 6th with the Vermont Divestment Networking uh, event, um, followed by an April 10th event looking at healthcare in the new economy. And April 17th, our April 17th event, um, and then a, another divesting event right before the summit. Mm -hmm. And the, the summit itself is on April 27th. Which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be uh, kind of, the, the structure of that event will be, in the morning there will be a morning keynote, and then um, each sort of track or each theme will have a morning session and an afternoon session, uh, and then ending with with sort of a brainstorming time for the group, and then uh, the the final the final sort of keynote speaker. Right, and um, we have a really great speaker lined up for the. We, we have a bunch of great speakers, um, but w one that we're particularly excited about and um, is joining us from the the Midwest um, is 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 Keith T Keith Taylor, who um, does a lot of sort of great work on uh, thinking about the cooperative. Um, the potential of, of the cooperative structure. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's like um, you know he he's I think it's like University of Indiana. He spent uh, he's just finished it or he's just right now kind of putting the final touches on his PhD dissertation. So he'll probably be kind of like in a very relieved mode when he gets when he gets here for the conference. Yeah, yeah, I can um, I can relate to that, <laughs> and, and I'm sure he'll be even more psyched because it's a dissertation. Yes, but so so basically. The, the way we'll be structuring the day is, you know, before the conference on the 17th, we have this kind of state of Vermont's cooperative economy. And then Keith will be really talking about the, uh, in the morning, we'll be sort of talking about the kind of potential of, like, what, what a cooperative economy looks like, kind of, like, why it's important, what, what makes it different than what we have now. 
kind of really sort of painting the, the broad big picture of like why this is an important, an important cooperation is important. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will be followed up in the afternoon by a session that's, you know, so we start off with that big picture sort of broad piece and then we'll kind of like narrow in a bit and say, okay, so now we're like, all right, if we agree that cooperation cooperatives are really, are an important thing and that we should be working to promote them, how do you promote them? And right. so we'll have, uh, the second session will have a couple of speakers. Um, Avram Pat will be um, talking a little bit about the, who actually sort of came into his position at the Washington Electric Co-op through kind of the democratic process of you know, a, group, a group within the, the co-op sort of pushing for certain policies. Mm -hmm. um, so talking a little bit about the, um, the experience of influencing co-op policy through the democratic process. And then Emily Sanders Kaminsky of the um, Granite City Grocery will be uh, speaking to the process of actually trying to organize a new co-op from the ground up. Um, you know, one is kind of trying to adjust the direction of existing co-ops. One is trying to sort of, ex you know, expand the the number and size of the cooperative economy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Betsy Black of the um, Cooperative Fund of New England uh, will be speaking a little bit about kind of financing options for cooperatives. So it's like, okay, so if you're wanting to start one, you know, how do you? Where does the money come from, et cetera? Uh, so I think the, the three of them will, will together offer a really sort of interesting kind of like more, very much more practical, you know, where Keith, Keith kind of will be giving the like the why. They'll be giving the kind of how. Mm -hmm. And then that leads up to sort of a, uh, um, a final breakout focusing on new projects that we can actually take out of that event. Mm -hmm. So potentially new food co new food co-ops, um, so right, the idea is to have something something actionable. So if people come in, they they get the sense, they, they they're inspired, they want to do something, and you know this will be at UVM, and uh, you know will be sort of a probably a mixture of students and uh, community members. So thinking mm -hmm. about what for the people who attend and are, are interested in this topic, what is it that we want to be the next step? What should come out of this? And you know I've heard ideas ranging from you know student food co-op to trying to get a credit union at UVM to you know it's really sort of going to be. You know, that there's a lot of options, so like how, how and what to get involved in. And um, if you, if you want to know more about the conference, um, it, the conf conference webpage is live and you can register for the conference now. Um, it's vtneweconomy.org. Mm -hmm. um, and with the, we received a generous grant from um, the New Economics Institute um, as long as, uh, along with support um, from other groups like the Cooperative Deve Development Institute. Um, so it, it, the, the event itself is, is designed to be super affordable. Um, mm -hmm. It'll actually be, be um, you know, you register, but it'll be free to attend. Uh, if you want lunch, it'll be a few dollars to help cover the cost of a burrito. But, um, and then there'll be coffee in the morning and uh, all of that. So it should be you know, super affordable and, and really just like hopefully a good kind of space for people interested in co-ops and sort of just new economic models from all over the state to really kind of come together and give it give it some thought and figure out kind of where do we go from here. Right. And that's, you know, that's the cooperative track. And if, if you're, um, you know, have an interest in public banking and taking ownership of investments, you know, there's those opportunities to get involved in those. Yeah, I know, I know Amy well. Kirshner and the financing track will be speaking to um, the, the Vermont Businesses for Social Responsibility. Um, marketplace that they're, they're putting together, which mm -hmm. is a very interesting model. There'll definitely be conversations about state bank, there'll be conversations about you know, divestment and like socially responsible investing. And it's, there's gonna be a lot of different, different uh, topics on the table that day, so it's, it's gonna be pretty exciting. Should, yeah, it'll, it'll be great. All right, so again, um, you know, once, once more before we jump to the next topic, uh, the, if you wanna to go to the state of the co Vermont's Cooperative Economy event, that's April 17th, uh, 6.30 p.m. in um, the uh, Waterman Memorial Lounge. Uh, and then the, the conference itself will be um, April 27th. Uh, and register at vtneweconomy.org. All right, so the, the last thing we've got on the agenda, and this is, should be fairly interesting, is uh, Eric had the, um, had the uh, good fortune or, you know, the, to, be, to be sort of sent to the Credit Union National Association's Governmental Affairs Conference as, I believe it was the board representative from uh, Vermont Federal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I was thinking it would be really interesting to, you know, this is a big conference, but, you know, for one of the, like, largest cooperative sectors in the, in the country, 
But I think it's very, very little is outside of like the credit union world. People don't really know about what it is. Or mm -hmm. so uh, I was thinking maybe we could, uh, you could give a little bit of an introduction to what what the conference is, and then uh, talk about your experience there a little bit. Sure. Um, so the the, the Governmental Affairs Conference is, is put on by, by CUNA, the Credit Union Nation, uh, National Association. So that's really like the largest trade group, um, credit union trade group. And a large part of what CUNA does is um, legislative advocacy, um, policy work, um, providing information to credit unions and services, but a, l a large part is the, the, uh, the policy work. Um, and that's, that's what this event focused on. Um, almost entirely. So there's sort of three components to the, and th there were 4,200 participants there from credit unions. You know, every every state was represented. as the the largest um, uh, governmental affairs conference to date. So I mean, that sort of by itself, sort of, you know, it gives you a good sense of where the credit union movement is. You know, it's the biggest conference that they've ever put on. So um, I think. I think credit unions are in a good good place. Um, <clears throat> there's three features to the conference. Um, the first is really getting an idea of what where what CUNA is doing right now. So um, their their CEO Bill Cheney spoke and he outlined their new strategic vision, which um, they've been working to to nail down for for quite a while. Um, and it's really interesting. It's um, it's called Unite for Good, and it focuses a lot, I would say, on developing the identity of the member. And um, it, it relates back to the discussion we were having earlier about mobilizing. Um, you know, th there's this huge base of credit union advocates out there, all the members. Um, so you know, how do we tap into that base and and um, you know, increase our you know, advocating, you know, our ability to move the credit union movement forward. So um, <clears throat> that's that, that, that's the conference sort of kicks off with with CUNA sort of giving a sense of where they are, and it's really cool because um, you know when you're there with over four thousand other people, you, you you really get a sense of the of the credit union movement and where it's at, um, <clears throat> and the. The second component is really hearing from lawmakers and uh, um, people in government about um, specifically about credit union le legislation, where that stands, and sort of um, some of the challenges. And uh, it's a really interesting time for credit union legislation. There's there's a, there's there's a lot of big um, big stuff happening. There's you know, we talk about tax reform and. Um, Credit unions are, you know, taxed differently than banks because they're not-for-profit organizations; they're cooperatives. Um, so, you know, there's advocacy that needs to be done when, you know, tax policy is is hot. And um, there's also, I mean, for Vermont, there's the member business lending is is a big thing for Vermont, where, um, you know, right now consumers have the the ability to um, to uh, Borrow from a credit union or borrow from a bank, um, and you know that that creates competition in the marketplace. So that benefits, you know, that benefits everyone. Um, and you know, credit unions are sort of arbitrarily capped at how much um, how much of their assets they can make in business loans. And it's currently what 12, 12.25 12 percent. Twelve point two five percent, and a lot of. Vermont credit unions are sort of getting close to that number. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, at that point, consumers lose a, a choice um, in the marketplace. So that, that's important to, you know, um, you know ensure that, that you know, there's as, as much choice out there as, as possible. Um, so hearing from actually people, you know, involved in credit union legislation is, 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 a, is a main, is a huge part. And then Thirdly, is actually going to meet with um, your representatives um, and, and you know getting to really advocate for um, what's in the best interest of the members. Mm -hmm. um, 
so in you know the Vermont contingent um, did this you know as a, as a group. Um, so there are representatives from many Vermont credit unions, and there were probably um, twenty five people or so in this in this group. So it really gave. I think it was effective in showing um, how much support there is for uh, for credit union friendly, you know, policies. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's members out there. You know, we're we're doing it for the members. And so, what's uh, what kind of which politicians did you guys interact with, and what was their what was their response to 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 the Vermont delegation? Well, I'm you know I'm, I'm I guess I should say that. Um, yeah, you know, these are just my personal um, mm-hmm. impressions, and you know they don't they don't represent any sort of official uh, official organization or anything like that. Um, but so the Vermont contingent met with um, our representative Peter Welch and both senators um, Bernie Sanders and uh, Pat Leahy, um, and. The, uh, the the response was um, was was quite you know they seem to be you know I th- I think to a varying degree um, recognize that um, w- tapping back into this um, this member sort of advocacy piece that you know w- where they're just trying to represent you know a, a much larger contingent. Um, you know, back in Vermont, and I think that you know that was that um, they were you know very open to hearing you know how they could help um, you know Vermonters. And the, so was in terms of the, the the issues that were at hand, like the member business lending and the um, and the taxation issues. Were were they all pretty much on the the side of credit unions? Was there any sort of equivocating on their parts, or um, I think I think. Uh, they were. Um, there was some equivocating, um, to, with, um, but I think they were all uh, open to hearing how. Um, I mean, s- some s- just strongly supported um, the the member business lending, and that that's, that's the main sort of. Uh, that's the main piece of. Uh, Legislation sort of relevant to Vermont credit unions at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say Bernie Sanders was overwhelmingly supportive of of, um, of that legislation, and he had you know just gotten off the floor um, making a speech slamming Jack Lew and big Wall Street banks. So um, he seems pretty solid there mm-hmm. um, in uh, you know democratic um, financial. Institutions, right? How about Leahy and Welch? Um, Pat Leahy was also um, very supportive, um, and you know, Peter Welch um, was open to the idea. He, you know, I think he, he needs to hear more um, about how member business lending benefits Vermonters. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so where does that, you know, after the, and you know, after the conference, where? Is, has there been an impact? Is there any sense of that if that's going to be uh, if that's going well, to be moving forward or? Well, it's 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 interesting. I think you know this conference does really um, it does make an impact. So you know while we were um, meeting with our representatives, all of these people from other states were meeting with their representatives as well. Um, and there's one piece of legislation that I would say is. Not very controversial. It's um, designed to reduce the amount of privacy notices that go out. Basically, a credit union wouldn't have to send out a privacy notice if there wasn't a change. So people only get sent a privacy notice when there's some sort of change, um, and that's that's sort of started to move very quickly. Um, and member business lending and um, um, supplemental forms of capital. Um, have been introduced in the House, but they haven't made their way to the Senate yet. <clears throat> and so, um, in addition to the the kind of lobby, lobbying for this the stuff, like as we saw that picture a moment ago of you and uh, Pat Leahy's office um, with with a whole crew of other Vermonters, right? Um, what other what other things kind of um, in, well? I guess there are two two questions. First is um, 
kind of what was your your sense of the sort of Vermont contingent in general? Did you um, did you spend a lot of time with them, or was it something where you guys met up for one or two things and then kind of all went your separate ways to other various sessions at the conference? Um, like uh, it was a it was it was a mix, but um, we all stayed in the same place, so there was sort of um, we'd always talk we'd talk about our impressions, you mm-hmm. know, of the, of the conference that day, you know, in the evening, um, and it that that was another interesting, um, you know, the, we the Vermont Credit Unions did a lot of stuff together, so you 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 could pick up on the camaraderie of you know. Even though we're competing in a marketplace, um, you know the, the cooperative sort of spirit was definitely um, was definitely palpable. Mm-hmm. And sort of um, on that same cooperative spirit, I think the thing that uh, that kind of caught my interest the most, you actually sent sent that uh, photograph um, of the of the program of from one of the sessions you went to, which was about credit unions inter- interacting with other cooperative sectors of yeah. the cooperative movement. Um, do you have? Uh, yep. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the program for it. The yeah. CUNA Cooperative Alliance Committee. I mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what what was that about? And what kind of was the was the you know who who was putting that on? Who was who was there and listening? And what was the sort of the the takeaway? Yeah, that was a, that was a really exciting event. So, the uh, CUNA Cooperative Alliance Committee, you know, was formed to look at ways in which um, credit unions could better cooperate with other cooperatives, promote cross-sector cooperation. And obviously, as a co-host of Cooperative Vermont, that's, you know, that's something I'm very interested in. Um, so th- this was, um, it seemed to be mostly organized by the um, National Cooperative Business Association, the NCBA, and uh, Mike Beal, their, their, their new head of that organization, was, was their um, sort of facilitating the event. Um, and there were other <coughs> credit union, uh, there was one, another panelist was a uh, credit union CEO who was also a board member of her food co-op. So, you know, people that had really sort of um, been intimately involved in, you know, facilitating these connections between cooperatives. Um, so it was, it was really interesting. And some of um, the what was incredibly um, interesting was there was a lot of conversation a, a, around how what sort of tools can be developed to allow for credit unions to invest in cooperatives, um, make that investment happen. Um, it, there, there are a lot of restrictions. Just you know, credit unions are. Uh, you know, they have the preferable tax status, which which is great, but they also have a, a lot of restrictions in terms of member business lending and what sort of investments they can make. And mm-hmm. um, so there's there was definitely this desire to uh, you know to get some of this capital flowing into the cooperative economy. Um, so there were some really interesting discussions around what sort of mechanisms would need to be created for that to happen. And what was the um, in terms of the people who were who were there? I mean, in the in the audience as well as presenting, um, kind of what what was the level of interest that, that you felt was was it um, you know was this something that was kind of a priority for people? Was there like a certain cross section of the attendees of the conference who were there? Like what was what was that? I would say the the um, the audience was generally pretty young, so that was that was sort of exciting that you know you have these. Um, Younger folks in the credit union movement who are, you know, gravitating towards this, this idea, um, and it, at my table are also representative from, representatives from other cooperatives. Um, someone from the mm-hmm. Rural um, Electric Cooperative Association. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was interesting to sort of. See the different levels that you know people were thinking about this on, um, and yeah, there were there were all sorts of consultants from. Um, the, there was this gentleman Adam Schwartz was on the panel, and uh, he does a lot of work with food co-ops, and um, you know was uh, very intimately. Actually, you know he's a friend of Keith's. Hmm. Um, he's a 
co-writer on that um, Cooperative Commonwealth uh, blog. Nice. Yeah. Um, so there were, there were just some really great conversations happening. Um, a lot of talk about what's going on in Austin with cooperation, with co cooperation Texas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know they just had a really cool cooperative summit. So um, there were some representatives from Austin Credit Unions, and the NCBA was you know was involved in that. So um, it's interesting to see this popping, you know, hot spots for this popping up in places like Austin and like Vermont with the new economy. Mm -hmm. um, Cooperative track and so um, it's definitely you know it's it's something that's that is is building you know it's definitely uh, um, it's still there's there's a lot of potential there but there's there's a lot of passion and mm -hmm. uh, it's been very interesting to see these kind of state these kind of like state level or re even regional level um, uh, sort of cooperative advocacy groups emerge, you know, which right. Cooperative Vermont is definitely one. Cooperation Texas is another one. There's one in Maine that's Cooperative Maine. And there's one I just became aware of in the Pacific Northwest called like Slice, supporting hmm. I think lo local independence co -op, independent co-ops everywhere. Huh. Um, Interesting. And it just seems seems like they're kind of these things that aren't, you know, that are, are maybe only kind of like merging from the fringes of the, the sort of institutional cooperative movement, but are kind of there's a definite impulse for them, and it's not just one place or another, but there's this kind of emerging, all blooming all over the place, so to mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to to think about that kind of being part of the conversation, like within the credit union movement. So, right. like you know, in terms of the hiking the hill thing um, or the the lobbying that you guys were doing, um, there's certainly um, you know, do you, do you think that there's a chance that some of those that removing those barriers to to um, to like cooperation and particularly funding cooperation between credit unions and other co-ops will be will be kind of coming onto the agenda of the credit union movement um, as one of its kind of political goals. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, um, it's I haven't. I don't. That financing piece hasn't gotten to that level yet. Um, but Bill Cheney spoke. About cooperation amongst cooperatives, you know, several times. So, you know, there, there that desires in the trade association. I think you know this plays into the conversation we were having about um, regulators that you know understand the cooperative principles, because cooperation amongst cooperatives is one of those principles. And uh, you know, there's a lot that can be done at the NCUA without, I think, potentially, you know. A, a legislative effort, you know, that can be done more in, in, in administrative means. Mm -hmm. No, that'll be a definite, definitely an interesting thing to continue following because I know um, there's been some discussion in, you know, about say like the Cooperative Fund of New England as a vehicle for um, for cooperative development is a bit small but growing uh, um, organization. And uh, looking at their institutional funders, there's you know several several for-profit banks that actually have some money invested there, but not mm -hmm. there were no credit unions listed uh, as of the last time I checked. So it'll be interesting to see if if those restrictions are lifted, if kind of credit unions can really step forward as you know the the kind of financial backbone of you know this kind of revived cooperative movement that we're seeing around the country. Right. I mean in. Credit unions just passed one trillion dollars in assets, right? So there's mm -hmm. there's uh, there's there's a lot of potential. You know, there's a lot of capital out there. Absolutely. I mean, it's like it's one of those things where it's there and it's kind of, you know, as uh, Roy Bergengren said, you know, back in the 1940s, you know, like he really saw credit unions as one one spoke in the great wheel of cooperation. So mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. will be, you know, the the sort of the push for for. Credit unions to really embrace that cooperative identity is something that, um, you know, I think we're I think we're both very much uh, very much in favor of, and I think it's a growing uh, trend across sort of across the country. Right. But now, any any other like kind of final reflections on the experience of going down there, just on a personal level? Um, you know, it, it it was it was just really great to get a you know a larger sense of. Um, what you know, because we do all this sort of work in Vermont, and cooperative Vermont, and then to, to to see that you know it's it's also going on in these other places, um, and to see sort of the um, passion for credit unions and cooperatives just you know 
really, really uh, um, feel good, you know, feeling. That's awesome. Well, it was, it was great that, that you had that opportunity to, to get down there. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that, that pretty much wraps up our, uh, our coverage for this week. Um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. We do this every two weeks. But we'll be back in two weeks with, um, with another, uh, I think, a pretty exciting guest, uh, John Quinney. It will be April 7th will be the, uh, when we film, film the, the next episode. Um, he's the, uh, he's in, with, involved with the Energy Co-op of Vermont, who we've been following quite a bit with their co-op power um, or with our co-op solar initiative. Right, right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a fairly recent co-op. I think they're only about a decade old. Um, but they supply kind of uh, heating, fuel, heating oil, wood pellets, um, and seem to be pretty, pretty dynamic and growing sort of up in at least northern Vermont. Mm-hmm. And credit unions financing some of that. Um, right. So that you know that's 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 an interesting topic that I'm sure we'll we'll touch on. Yeah, it'll be definitely I think interesting too. You know, we've uh, so far on the show we've had uh, you know Co-op Power of Southern Vermont and the Washington Electric Co-op folks from those two organizations. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of a third kind of uh, you know each each of which has a bit of a different focus. And so it'll be it'll be interesting to right. add like a third to the sort of energy co-op mix. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that will be uh, April seventh. Um, until then, you can always catch. Uh, catch our past episodes uh, we throw them up on YouTube um, and on our blog which is uh, coopvt.wordpress.com uh, if you just go to the episode archive you can see all of the previous ones we've done mm-hmm. um, and you know in the in the time between each episode we keep uh, we've got a Facebook page as well uh, cooperative Vermont uh, which we keep updated with the, all the latest co- Vermont co-op news and interesting co-op movement news nationally and internationally that crosses our uh, our feeds right um, so you can keep up to date then, and uh, if you if you um, have any you know things that you would like added, feel free to post to that wall. Mm-hmm. Or you know if you're involved in a co-op and you'd like to come on the show, um, you can lead, send a, send the page a message or send send us a message through the through the website. And uh, we're always interested in a new dynamic Vermont cooperative projects. So um, until next week, I'm Matthew Crop, and I'm Eric Davis. Good night. <laughs>